Hi YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark, Nuts for Art. Um, I'm going to read a little bit from the book I've been reading online, uh, Population Control Through Nuclear Contamination by Arthur um, Camplin and John Goffman, written in 1970. I realize today if I don't read this book every single day, by the time I finish it, we'll all be dead from Fukushima, so I need to get on with it. So, um, we're on page 35 on the new subchapter in chapter 3. Chapter 3 is titled, Beware the Gallant Night of Technological Progress. <clears throat> the subtitle that we're reading starts with, Side Effects in 5 to 20 Years. Thus, a thus, as a result of medical and industrial uses of radiation and, and atom bombs, a large number of humans have been exposed to radiation. If the side effects, as for example cancer or leukemia, had been immediate, the AEC would have been seriously embarrassed many years ago. For reasons not yet understood, such side effects of radiation exposure as cancer or leukemia require 5 to 20 years to manifest themselves. Side effects such as irreversible damage to the genes will only appear in future generations of the individual radiated. And in today's world, that means all of us. This delay in manifestation of side effects has proved enormously helpful to the AEC which has been able to carry on activities involving radiation of humans for many years and each year point out that the humans are still alive, at least until the 5 or 20 year time has elapsed and leukemias and cancers become obvious to everyone. The tolerance dose concept of radioactive poison is promulgated. The reader will certainly ask how the promoter, the AEC in this case, ever arrived at a certain radiation dose as tolerable or permissible. This goes to the very heart of the problem all technology promoters face when side effects rear their ugly heads. The AEC, like other super agency promoters of technology, has as a prime objective the growth ad infinitum of its technology, ad infinitum of its technology. The first step is a total denial that side effects are related to the technology, especially where the individuals exposed to noxious byproducts such as radioactivity don't drop over dead immediately upon exposure. Denial of these delayed effects buys the promoter time for unbridled exploitation and rape. <clears throat> That's a good way to put it. But a second line of defense is soon needed. This is the so-called tolerance or allowable dose approach used by the AEC and other technology promoters. For most poisons, the fraction of people killed by the poison goes up with increasing dose. It becomes obvious, therefore, that legal, lethal effects are perceived early in groups of persons who are massively exposed, say, to radi radioactivity as a poison. Suppose 100 persons are exposed to a particular dose of radioactivity and that 50 of them die of cancer. The promoter of atomic energy technology then comes up with an ingenious pronouncement. That particular dose of radioactivity must have been above the tolerance or allowable dose. <clears throat> so a new tolerance dose is set somewhere below this amount of radioactive exposure, even though it is, there is not one bit of evidence that any dose will be tolerated without ever producing cancer or leukemia. But for a promoter of technology, like the AEC, taking away the concept of a tolerance dose is far worse than taking candy away from a child. <clears throat> for so long as a tolerance or allowable dose can be reset at some lower value, more time is available for the technology to proceed before it becomes obvious to everyone that even at the lower dose, Grossly unacceptable numbers are, of humans are being killed by cancer and leukemia. It's just that it takes longer to prove that 5 out of 100 are being killed. Excuse me. 
It's just that it takes longer to prove that 5 out of 100 people are being killed than it takes to prove that 50 out of 100 people are being killed. The promoter thus buys more time for exploitation. Actually, any poison that kills one extra human being out of 10,000 is a major public health disaster. So between the proof that 50 out of 100 are being killed by a radioactive poison and the proof that 1 out of 10,000 is being killed, there are innumerable opportunities to keep setting the allowable dose successively lower, hence buying more and more time. Like now, it's 1 in 26,000. <clears throat> okay. And as a dubious bonus, the heredity gene pool of the human race is irreversibly damaged, to say nothing of irreversible contamination of our planet. Fuck me. So, I won't stop, but I'm going to go back and read that again. I'm going to have to cut this part out. During all this atomic... Okay, so let's start. One, two, three. During all this, the atomic technology can flourish. Tens of thousands of people can be murdered annually, all legally, under the deception entitled Within the Allowable Tolerance. And as a dubious bonus, the heredity, hereditary gene pool of the human race is irreversibly damaged, to say nothing of the irreversible contamination of the planet. As the experience from human exposure to radiation and experimental animal exposure has accumulated, it has become painfully clear that no evidence exists or has ever existed that suggests that there is any safe tolerance dose of radiation. <clears throat> A rational approach is needed. How then did we ever get into this irrational box of the tolerance dose for a variety of technologically produced poisons? We did so because of the role of super agencies as promoters of technology. One doesn't have to consider the Atomic Energy Commission, which is a prime example, as a group of evil men dedicated to the destruction of all human life even though their actions may lead to precisely this result. By casting them in the dual role of promoter and regulator, we force their actions to be evil, even when their intentions may have been good. One only has to observe the reflex decerebration manifested by the Atomic Energy Commission or the Joint Committee on Atomic Energy when the word death or cancer from radiation exposure are mentioned to appreciate how inappropriate this dual role is. Criticism of such decerebration is no more indicated than the criticism of reflex behavior of a dog conditioned to salivate at the ringing of a bell. So you know what decerebration is, don't you? It is like a, a, a like if somebody's in a coma, they retract in there. It's an involuntary uh, withdrawal or a movement, and this leads to the decon and this leads to the consideration of more rational approaches to development of technologies like atomic energy. The conflict between the gallant knight and his experts and the public. Our endeavor above has been to show that the promotion of technology by a super agency such as the AEC is an all-consuming affair, leaving little or no room for an ability to contemplate the consequences to humans of the technology. Those who desire not to be victimized by the rashness of the entrepreneurial approach are required. In what has to be the acme of injustice to prove the technology has harmed or will harm them. The Atomic Energy Commission is not required to prove that their emissions of radiation poison is safe. <clears throat> Far from it, 
An individual who wishes to raise a question about safety of his exposure to radioactive poison must use his own personal resources of funds for legal counsel and legal procedure. Arrayed against him is the entire Solicitor General's office at the U.S. government and the vast resources of the Atomic Energy Commission to purchase testimony from hangers-ons whose resources of research funds and livelihoods derive directly from the AEC, which is why they tell us it's all safe. And if this lopsided array were not sufficient, the added insult is provided by the judiciary branch of the government. The, judici the judiciary, as recent decisions indicate, operate on the presumption that the government would surely not set tolerance standards that are unsafe for the individual. Why and how this strange optimism on the part of the judiciary has arisen escapes understanding, but it is in fact in existence. In summary then, an individual can be denied life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness by a government super agency, and if he complains of the abrogation of his constitutional rights, he is likely to find major branches of government with fantastic resources arrayed against him with the purpose of denying him those rights. That's what's happening now, folks. Wow, written in 1970. <clears throat> Safety record claims are false. Huh. That's a shock. For years we have been hearing of the inordinarily good record of the atomic energy industry with respect to safety and freedom from fatal accidents. Just because the AEC commissioners are making such assertions, we should not automatically assume that the assertions are false. However, even minor probing is sufficient to reveal that the assertion of a good safety record is not only false, it is absurd. It turns out that the record is good because it is so defined. Defining a record as good is achieved by the simple expediency of vigorously denying culpability for deaths that are obviously the direct result of the exposure to radiation of the industrial employee. Let us consider the case of an atomic energy industry worker who received over a 10 year period the amount of radiation labeled as tolerance. This, is, this he is legally allowed to receive. Our estimates in good general accord with those of the respected International Commission of Radiological Protection would indicate that after a latency period of five to ten years or so, one out of every two cancers incurring in such workers are the direct result of occupational exposure. So if we observe 100 cases of cancers or leukemia in such workers and present evidence, the present evidence indicates that approximately 50 of them are occupational. By remarkable expedient de by the remarkable expedient of defining a, a radiation dose which doubles the cancer rate as tolerance, the atomic in energy industry absolves itself of responsibility of these cancers. Thus, a simple definition, the atomic energy industry has an excellent safety record. Even if it produces thousands of fatal cancers and leukemias. Let me read that sentence again. Thus, by simple definition, the atomic energy industry has an excellent safety record, even if it produces thousands of fatal cases of cancer and leukemias. Hmm. Technology sings itself praises of the wondrous benefits it is conferring, or is about to confer, upon the unwitting population when, pre when pressed, a technological super agency such as AEC adds its repertoire of lullabies about benefits of a new tune entitled, The Benefits Outweigh the Risks. <laughs> yeah, we should write a song like that. The Benefits Outweigh the Risks. 
As sung by the AEC commissioners, the ditty is meaningless, and of course they have no intention that it shall be otherwise. But within these words is the germ of an idea that can be the basis of a rational approach to technology and its associated poisonous byproducts. Society may indeed require the benefits of a new or existing technology has to offer. I apologize, I'm not reading very well tonight. Um, I think I'm going to end here. I've only got like, where? we're almost done with this chapter, see? But I'm beginning to really lose it. So I think what I'm going to do tomorrow night is start over here, safety records are, and reread that section because I don't think I read it very well. Anyways, I don't know how you guys feel, but I think 15 minutes is way long enough. Um, so, see you guys tomorrow night. I'm going to make an effort to post this up every night till we get through this book. And um, I hope that you're able to understand my reading. Um, I'll talk to you guys later. Sweet dreams. <laughs>